Advocate by Advocate Mosa. Um, we will be receiving a brief, a briefing from the Magistrate Commission on the disciplinary issues uh, with specific reference to the Magistrate, the Chief Magistrate of Canton Park. Um, I think now the time is now two o'clock on the dot. Uh, let's start. Uh, welcome, uh, Advocate Musa, and to your team. Uh, we'll now hand over to you to give us the briefing. Uh, uh, members, the discussion on this report uh, is set down for the date of you, Advocate Musa. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. Um, this afternoon, we have the briefing of uh, the Magistrate, Ms. Judy van Skalkweg, uh, Chief Magistrate, Subcluster Head, Kempton Park, Johannesburg. Um, I'm just for the purposes of good order and just to refresh the mem memory of the Honorable Members, I just want to give you a brief background and then I can tell you how far we are and where we are at the, at the moment. So you'll recall, honorable members, that Ms. Judy van Skalpek uh, was charged for misconduct and she was previously suspended from office on the 4th of June 2013. Uh, that's approximately eight years ago that Ms. van Skalpek was suspended from office. And you'll also remember and recall that the Magistrates Commission appeared, uh, appeared before the honorable committee in order to request that her, her remuneration be provisionally withheld and which request was during 2017 acceded to. Um, on the 2nd of October, 2018, Ms. Uh, Judy van Skalkveig's uh, disciplinary proceedings commenced and uh, 24 months later, two years later, uh, Ms. van Skalkveig was convicted of 13 counts of misconduct of the cumulative 24 counts that in fact she initially was charged with. The presiding officer, uh, Regional Magistrate, Mr. A. Maraj, uh, issued a sanction of dismissal uh, on the 2nd of October, 2020. Uh, once the sanction was in fact um, provided to the Magistrates Commission, Ms. Van Skalkveit then submitted her representations on the sanction uh, within obviously the timelines that were required and the matter was duly considered by the Magistrates Commission, and I pause to mention, honorable members, that these, this consideration was done obviously in the absence of uh, the executive and the members of parliament. Um, having considered the judgment of, the, of, the, uh, of Mr. Maraj, the, the Magistrates Commission, the commissioners were split in terms of the support of the sanction of dismissal. And I want to indicate that of the 18 commissioners that were involved in the deliberation of the sanction, 70%, uh, which is 13 of the commissioners were of the view that the sanction should be supported. And some of the, some of them, some of the commissioners raised the concern that they did not want to in fact uh, support the findings on the charges based on the fact that uh, some of these matters related to the activities of Juwasa. Uh, but however, um, and some of the, some of the um, commissioners were of the view that in fact, uh, the sanction of removal from office was extremely harsh in the circumstances and that uh, she in fact, to an extent, be demoted to the exclusion of dismissal. However, the majority of the commissioners had aligned themselves with the finding of the presiding officer that she be removed from the office. And therefore, the commission then requested the honorable minister to take the relevant steps to implement the decision of the presiding officer, which is supported by the commission. The honorable minister then, the letter was drafted to the honorable minister on the um, 17th of March, 2021, and pursuant thereto, uh, the report to the minister was furnished to the offices of the ministry by Mr. Mayor. Essentially, the minister, after having considered the documents and considered the entire matter on the 27th of July, 2021, uh, confirmed the suspension of Ms. Van Skalpik from office 
and then uh, uh, presented the report as required by section 13.4b of the Magistrates uh, Act to Parliament for consideration. But subsequent or, or pursuant to the report being presented to Parliament on the 27th of July, 2021, certain events in fact came to the fore, which obviously I will respectfully request that the honorable members of the committee would have to carefully apply their mind to. And to that extent, the following transpired that on the 21st of May, 2021, uh, Ms. Van Skalkweg then uh, brought review proceedings in the Gauteng Local Division, Johannesburg. And the three respondents being one, the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Development, two, the Magistrates Commission, and three, the uh, presiding officer. Now, what I would like to, to perhaps specifically and succinctly bring to the attention of the Honorable Chairperson and the members is that when you look at the review application, I want to firstly draw the first point to the attention of the, the, the uh, committee, and that is the Magistrates Commission and the decision to, the decision to suspend as well as the, the reports have all emanated out of the offices of the Magistrates Commission, as well as the Ministry in Pretoria. And the one challenge or one, one anomaly that I've picked up by looking at the review application is that the review application in fact has been issued out of the Gauteng local division. So the, the, in the main, in fact, the review application should in fact have been issued out of the Gauteng division, which is Pretoria because the Magistrates Commission as well as the, as well as the ministry uh, are located in, in Pretoria. So that's one issue that I'd like the, the, the committee to apply their mind to. The second aspect that I want to draw the uh, committee's attention to is that from a reading of the review application, one would observe that the despite the fact that the Honorable Minister is cited as the first respondent, no relief is being sought against the first, first respondent. The only relief that is being sought is that against the Magistrates Commission, as well as the third respondent, the presiding officer. Now that creates a little bit of an anomaly to the extent that if there is no, or despite the fact that the, the ministry or the honorable minister is cited as the first respondent and no relief is being sought against the, the honorable minister, the question that begs to be asked is then, is parliament not entitled to then proceed? in the absence of any relief being sought against the minister and more especially against the report of the minister which confirms her suspension from office and obviously a recommendation for the removal from office. So that is the one scenario you have. And against that background, uh, the practical consideration that one needs to take into account is the fact that there is a review application sitting now in respect of the decision of the, the second or the third respondent, more especially as the, and the second respondent. And if, the, if parliament were to then proceed with the removal from office, the position simply would be, um, would the magistrate, Ms. Van Skalweg, have had a fair opportunity to have ventilated whatever difficulty and challenges that she may have in a review proceeding. So on the one hand, um, honorable members, honorable chairperson and members, you are faced on, uh, on a technical level to say, look, there is no bar on the face of it. The fact that there's no relief being sought against the minister, that you can proceed uh, in terms to take a decision regarding the recommendation of the minister. But on the other hand now, having been faced with the review application, um, perhaps in the, in the spirit of interest of justice, equity and fairness, perhaps it might be the last attempt that Ms. Van Skalbrink will ever have an opportunity at in fact, asking a reviewing court to perhaps come to her, her rescue. Um, I don't know, Honorable Chairperson, if I need be to traverse the lengthy delays 
in this particular matter, but I think the record will speak for itself that we are now eight years down the line, uh, but it is trite that um, she has the right to in fact uh, take the matter on review, all, albeit that she could have done this a long time ago, but again, there's been a systematic delay in that. So the, the, the position very simply will be in the main, one would obviously have to apply one's mind as to whether a postponement of these deliberations and proceedings would be justified in the circumstances. Uh, and against that background, as to whether uh, the fact that the no relief is being sought against the minister and the minister's report and stands unchallenged in respect of the confirmation of suspension from office, as well as a removal as to whether then parliament would want to proceed. Um, so that is where we are at at the moment, Honorable Chairperson. My, my knee jerk reaction in the matter would be that perhaps um, no prejudice would be suffered if the, uh, the reviewing court is given an opportunity to be able to apply its mind to the review uh, in this particular matter. I believe that would be just and fair and equitable in the circumstances. Uh, and that I perhaps would, would ask the chairperson and the members of the committee to, to carefully apply their mind in that, in that regard, despite the fact that this matter has been delayed over a, a number of years, despite the fact that even the Supreme Court of Appeal and the High Court has ruled against Ms. van Skalpweg on three separate occasions where there are three cost orders against her. But I believe in the interest of justice and, and fairness, one should in fact grant a postponement of these deliberations pending the outcome of the review, review application. Perhaps uh, I, may, I may be bold enough to request the honorable chairperson, I don't know, or if, 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 if part of the the response from the committee would be that the review should be in fact finalized as soon as possible. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want the review for us to be sitting here ad infinitum waiting for the review to be, to be, out, to be finalized. You'll also remember and recall honorable chairperson and members that Ms. Van Skaltrick is, well, is 60 years old at the moment. Um, her normal retirement age will be 65, but there would, nothing be, there would be nothing preventing her from bringing an application to the Honorable Minister to in fact allow her to go on early retirement. So I am of the respectful view that this is one of those matters with the, with the intervention of, of, of your committee, Honorable Chairperson, that we should try and expedite the review. And once the review is then finalized, at least justice would, would have been done on all sides. So that's where we are at, and that's what I'm asking the Honourable Committee this afternoon to perhaps apply its mind to carefully perhaps maybe allowing a postponement of, of, of the deliberations pending the outcome of the review. Thank you very much, Advocate Musa. Um, and my apologies, members. I think I, we, we received a letter uh, from uh, the magistrate's lawyers, I think it's Dr. Uh, Atenis, asking us that we must stay the matter until the review application is heard. Um, I might have just forgotten to, to ask the committee secretary to distribute the letter. Uh, my apologies, uh, members. But uh, committee secretary, if you can circulate the letter to all the members of the committee. Um, we have heard what uh, Advocate Mosa from the Magistrate Commission and his team have said. Uh, uh, comments, members? Honorable Horn. Thank you, Chair, um, and good afternoon to, to colleagues and the delegation from the Magistrates Commission. Um, Chair, um, what has been circulated to us as well, which I think is very relevant, is the legal advice from the legal advisors of Parliament in respect of a matter dealt with in 2017 um, and where the advice was, was uh, actually quite clear to the extent that in the absence of 
a court order preventing Parliament from dealing to, to, to the matter. And as I say, we're, um, uh, while simultaneously uh, obtaining an interim order preventing us from finalising the matter, there's also an argument to be made out that we are under an obligation to, to finalise the matter. Um, that, of course, doesn't mean necessarily, in my view, that we are an, uh, under an obligation to, to, to deal with it on an urgent basis. But I would be, from, from, from our side, I think we would be very hesitant to, to park this matter, or put it on ice, pending the review application, and, and uh, Advocate Musa uh, uh, refers to and attempts to expedite this. Um, it would be good to hear from him what, in terms of practicalities, uh, would be the, the ability of, of parties to the matter to expedite this. Um, as it is, we, we know that matters are, have been delayed heavily by, by COVID-19, so it would be good to hear in the ordinary Recording in course, progress. In the ordinary course of, 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 of matters or of business, how long the review application typically will take, and if there is then a, a mechanism to to expedite it, what the what the uh, what the likelihood is of it being dealt with then within a specific time period. Um, so I think that is a matter we must first consider as a committee our our duties and obligations specifically in the circumstances where we are merely faced, and I've not, as you indicated, Chair, had sight of the letter, but specifically in the circumstances where we, we are not barred, legally speaking, from finalizing the matter. And the, the, the uh, flip side of that, that coin then saying, we, sh we, could not, uh, we should not be subject ourselves to a situation where we could be accused of, of dragging our feet whilst being under a, a constitutional obligation to deal with the matter. So if we could be appraised of those issues, uh, I think we could make a more informed decision. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Horn. Honorable Newport Strachan. I think it was Honorable Janji. Yes, yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. Yes, before you speak, Honorable Janji, uh, my apologies, members. I wanted to inform you that the ANC has appointed Honorable Janji as the whip of the ANC uh, in the committee. I would like to congratulate you, Comrade uh, Honorable Janji, on your appointment as the whip of the ANC uh, in this committee. No, thank you, Chair. I thought Verna Horn and uh, Glennis Breitenbach knew that already, uh, but let me proceed. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who told them, but you may proceed. Yeah. No, Chair, <clears throat> I, I want to, to echo and follow uh, Honorable Horn because I, at this stage, I'm not coming in to... to to indicate uh, a particular position, it's just an a a a, a query chair on mm -hmm. Advocate Musa in the form of clarity. Because uh, one, I note the uh, the legal opinion that, that we have received. At the same time, I am also of the view that uh, uh, as things are, uh, unless there are more facts presented in front of us, um, nothing, uh, especially given uh, not only the history of Ms. Van Skalkweg, but the history of uh, disciplinary processes in the magistrate that takes so long. Uh, one is very allergic to, 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 to anything that, uh, uh, that postpones a matter when you have no reason. Uh, to do that, but I, I will come back to that. But the clarity I wanted for him because he has said uh, there will be no harm uh, if we, we, we await the review. I would have loved him to go to the other side 
and indicate to us whether what harm would there be if we proceed, given the fact that nothing bars us legally from proceeding. He's not gone to that side. And, 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 and in, in, in him not doing that, it, it, it doesn't help because it can, it can come across Advocate Musa that uh, you might not necessarily, uh, for whatever reason, uh, what you're presenting have looked at all the, all, all the sides and, and that you, 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 you come in front of us with a particular view uh, in the exclusion uh, of the other. So it, it would be very interesting for me, for him to, to explain that but I would want to come back, Chair, because I, I'm of the very firm view uh, that uh, unless extraordinary facts are given to us as to why uh, we, sh we, should, we, sh we should delay, uh, I, I'm very allergic to, to do that. And maybe Advocate Musa can assist uh, when he, he responds uh, in, in this way. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nivot Trachens. Um, thank you very much, Chair, and good afternoon to everybody. I don't want to take the committee back. Um, however, I just would like to understand the eight years that it has taken um, to get this far. Um, and also, I mean, we really would not want to then delay to 10 years you know, instead of eight, make it 10 years or whatever the case may be. Um, but just, just to refresh my memory. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Master Kwajale. Sorry, Chair. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I think congratulations. Uh, in order, Chair, for our whip, uh, as you have already indicated. But on this matter, Chairperson, uh, I wanted to find out from Advocate, Advocate Musa that uh, much as he motivated uh, and gave us a view on this matter, uh, also giving us whatever facts to motivate uh, for us to stay the matter for, for until it is the court finalized uh, with, with, with this matter. Did he consider the integrity of this committee, which is uh, the integrity of the parliament uh, when it comes to the duties that we need to dispatch as a committee, that what is this going to do to us? Uh, since uh, this matter, uh, Chairperson, from our side, we are not obliged to take any other view except the view of continuing and do our work in line with the advice uh, from our legal team. I wanted to find out from him that did he consider that because uh, when, you, uh, when I was reading all the circumstances surrounding this matter, I think I just felt put myself in a position of the president of this country that uh, we are really at heart at work in, 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 in trying to bring back the integrity of uh, 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 our government when it comes to such issues in cleaning our institutions. Uh, I want to find out from him that uh, did he maybe at some point thought mm -hmm. about that chair? Mm -hmm. That's all that I wanted to ask, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Jere, Advocate Musa. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. 
if you uh, maybe, maybe before maybe before you proceed, I take it that uh, um, the absence of these magistrates from work creates more work for other magistrates who are in that court because you have one person down who was supposed to who was supposed to have uh, done some cases. So that is, is an, is, that is really unfair uh, unto those magistrates who have to do more because one person is out. Yes, so, I'll, I'll deal with that. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. You'll remember when I, in fact, addressed the committee initially, I indicated that my knee-jerk reaction would be perhaps to consider the, the review application. But having said that, You'll remember and recall at the outset, I indicated that firstly, uh, there is, uh, the, although the minister has been cited, no relief is being sought against the minister. So in my view, there is no bar for one to be able to proceed on the report of the minister in this particular matter. But I just, if you permit me, I'd just like to, to answer each of the queries that were raised now, just overall then close it up. Uh, Honorable Horn, wanted to find out as to how long the review process and proceedings would take. Um, my understanding currently is that the Magistrates Commission would have to uh, finalize an affidavit, uh, oppo an opposing affidavit in the review application. And once that is filed, then the review application will be able to set down. And to that extent, if it is so required for the purposes of deliberation, I'm quite happy to revert post haste to give perhaps a time frame as to how long this would take in order just to answer Honorable Horn's, Horn's question. Uh, in terms of what the Honorable uh, uh, Member Janshi has in, in requested as to what harm would be suffered, yes, that is absolutely correct. In fact, I do apologize. I should have in fact uh, indicated that at the outset. The challenge we are having currently is that you will remember that Ms. Van Skalpweg was the chief magistrate at Kempton Park. So currently she has been occupying that post and we are unable to fill that post. So that is the, the harm that we are facing currently. And that the longer that it may take, the longer that that post will not get filled. So that is something that, that needs to be taken into account as well. Um, in fact, in, in the, the honorable member, uh, Dr. Nivot had asked as to um, what has transpired in the period of eight years I think just to give a proper background and perspective to the honorable members, um, I perhaps will just hand over to Mr. Mayor, who will just take you through the period of the eight years and, and as to how the matter was delayed, not by the Magistrates Commission, but by specifically the conduct of Ms. Van Skalpik. So Mr. Mayor, can you perhaps please just assist with your permission, honorable chairperson, if I can ask Mr. Mayor just to assist. Thank you very much, Advocate Musa. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and members. Um, yeah, Ms. Van Skalkik was charged in 2013. Shortly thereafter, she took the decision of the Commission uh, to charge her with misconduct and the whole procedure which has been followed and has been enacted by the Act and the Code of Conduct and the regulations of judicial officers in the lower courts on review to, uh, well, she, she actually challenged the constitutionality of the regulations and the Code of Conduct in the High Court. Now, the High Court um, in 2015 dismissed her application with costs. She then appealed to the full bench uh, this was also dismissed with full, with full costs, with, dismissed with costs, and then she approached the Supreme Court of Appeal. Now that took about four years of the eight years. So immediately after the SCA judgment was reported, we uh, commenced with the disciplinary inquiry. So uh, that was actually the, and, and of course, uh, she on numerous occasions changed uh, legal attorneys, um, where after she, at the end, ultimately, she um, elected to to um, 
to present her case herself. Now, I will say that the judgment was already and the sanction was imposed on the 2nd of October last year. We were almost a year later. And, um, well, the, and, and the commission considered the matter in, in March and the report was filed with the minister's office and it has now been eventually been tabled. So that took the delay and, and a, a number of witnesses were called. And yeah, the matter was a bit complicated. It's a lot of documentary evidence which was uh, presented at the tribunal. Um, a lot of witnesses were called. She called a few witnesses, but she doesn't testify herself. So um, in the, the ultimate event is that she has been found guilty uh, only after after a number of years, yes, in 2020. I think that's, if, if that concludes, Mark. Oh, Chairperson? You are muted. You are muted. Chairperson? Uh... Chairperson? Sorry. May I just add something about Advocate Musa? Um, Chairperson, the, the, the post in Kempton Park, there's now an acting chief magistrate. So it has a, um, an effect on the, on the fiscus of the department. Just want to add to that. Mr. Mayor, you are muted. Chair, I think your bandwidth gave you problems uh, for a while. That is Yes, Chair, it was Mr. Mayor was was actually audible and uh, he concluded. Oh, so Honorable Mola has transferred his problems to me now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. May I continue? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, so you you will again I, I go back again to the point that I had made initially that my knee-jerk reaction was to perhaps apply one's mind to a postponement. But you have two scenarios that I asked the Honorable Committee to take into account. One is that there has been a delay in the filing of the review application. Two, that the review application has been filed in the wrong jurisdiction. That is in the Gauteng Local Division, Johannesburg, and not the Gauteng Division, Pretoria. Three, the Honorable Minister, who has been cited as the first respondent, no relief is being sought against him. Four, no relief is being sought or interdict is being sought against parliament from proceeding in respect of finalizing this particular matter. Uh, so these are all the various aspects. And lastly, uh, the, the opinion, as you are full well aware, allows and entitles parliament to be able to proceed with the matter. So you have that on the one hand completely. And on the other hand, you have a review application. And, and at the end of the day, the only, the only positive for the review application is to say that now we are taking the matter on review. However, if you look at the review application, the, the, they do not really take the court into their confidence properly to explain the unnecessary delays and um, I, I align myself with Honorable Maseko Jere regarding the integrity of the committee. I have taken that into consideration. That is why at the outset, when I addressed the committee, I succinctly drew the committee's attention to all these various anomalies on the one side. And on the other side, we only have a review application. On the face of it, there's absolutely no bar as I see it from the documents that are before me, the legal opinion to prevent Parliament from in fact proceeding and taking a decision in respect of this particular matter. On the other hand, we have the review application. I unfortunately, as I sit now, and am unable to in fact commit to an absolute time frame. Uh, but if the committee so requires, I'm happy to at least give feedback in writing by at least tomorrow and indicate as to how long this process could take if the committee so wishes and desires for me to report back on. So if one balances the two, uh, it's clear that there's nothing really preventing uh, Parliament from proceeding in this particular matter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable Janji, do you want, uh, your hands is up. Do you want to come back? Yes, Chair. 
if you if if you allow you, if you give me that permission please proceed no no thank you very much uh, chair and thanks for uh, assisting us with that critical question that you raised i think it has it has helped me uh, let, let me thank uh, uh, advocate musa and uh, mr mayor for 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 their responses uh, chair from the outset i i want to to suggest chair that uh, um, on, on, on the available evidence in front of us that we should proceed uh, with, 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 our, with our actions as, as, as the National Assembly. And, and I'm raising that because initially, Advocate Musa would have uh, um, nudged us, would have uh, wanted to persuade us to await the review and, and he anchored that argument on the interest of justice. And that was his main uh, anchor of that. And, and I want to take that because when, when you delve into that, when you take that uh, quite clearly, uh, the weight uh, does not and cannot fall on the interest of justice for Ms. Van Skalkweg, uh, given the fact that eight years has lapsed with us exercising that caution, eight years. Um, and your question has exposed something because if, if you're looking at the administration of justice, the prolonging of this case certainly does not help uh, to address that question because then the interest of justice here, uh, if, if we are to look into that, uh, you, you, you already have a limited capacity in the Magistrate Commission, Honorable Horn, uh, Advocate uh, Musa knows that, uh, for a fact, and, and for all of these years, you had this acting capacity. And, and if you extend that, it, 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 it would say to you, uh, the kind of uh, I mean, justice that was submitted to communities is not what it should have been, given mm -hmm. those kind of capacities that, I mean, in, in, in capacities that, 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 that you have. But second, in relation to, uh, to Mr. Horn's question, um, I, I want to say even without uh, waiting for Mr. Advocate Musa to come back because he knows, I know, Honorable uh, Horn knows that uh, in fact, when we had a workshop on the 30th of October, 2020, uh, uh, we're discussing the state uh, of, of, of the Magistrate Commission uh, that critical unit that he is part of, together with Mr. Mayor, um, became clear that uh, so much needs to be done to capacitate that, to give them more legs and warm bodies, because they are overwhelmed by the kind of, uh, because the, 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 that unit, uh, that division, uh, ethics division, if I'm correct, uh, we have resolved to say, what kind of, uh, even if it's, it's temporary or in a, a medium uh, kind of capacity that me, it needs. And therefore, there can be any guarantee that he can provide that uh, the, the process can be fast track. It's just not possible. It, that can be done at the expense of another important case. And I wouldn't want us to even give him that kind of an opportunity to go and, 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 and come back and, and tell us because as commissioners of the Magistrate Commission, we know the state of affairs, which is what that is, 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 is happening there. So I would not be persuaded, would not be impressed ab ab about that uh, uh, at, 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 at all. And so I think the issue of the, the, the impact on the, on the cluster in terms of, uh, of fiscal uh, practicalities weighs very heavy uh, in my mind, Chair. And for that reason, uh, given also the absence of any other um, convincing argument in front of us, backed by our own legal opinion, also his own report about the decision of the commission uh, on this issue, I certainly have no reason to want us to delay this any further. Uh, so that's really what I wanted to, to put forward, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Chanje. Honorable Mola. Well, well, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Honorable Chanje has uh, 
covered a lot of ground in terms of uh, what I wanted to to submit as well. Uh, Advocate Musa uh, calls the conduct and the behavior of the magistrate in question unnecessary delays. I think we should uh, call it uh, deliberate delaying tactics uh, that are as means to bar and prevent the relevant uh, institutions that are supposed to attend to the matter uh, from, from, from doing so. So it's, it's one unacceptable behavior and an unacceptable, unacceptable conduct from a judicial officer. We, we should not even attempt to allow it to. Uh, uh, so so uh, fortunately, Advocate Musa is saying there is nothing as things stand. Uh, apart from the, por- the process, uh, Mag- Magistrate Skal Vague has uh, engaged on. But there is nothing that prevents us as parliament from proceeding with our own process. So I wish to echo and uh, support uh, the, the submissions of Honorable Janji that we should indeed proceed with, with our own process. Uh, the, what we have, the evidence that we have is evidentiary enough for us to proceed. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Ngola, uh, Advocate Musa. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. The last thing that I just want to perhaps with your permission, just draw the attention of the committee to is that um, I understand and appreciate that they perhaps may have not had sight of the letter from the attorney dated the 19th of August, 2021. But I'd just like you to read paragraph five to you and make a comment thereon. It says, paragraph five, we accordingly on an urgent basis request you to confirm one, receipt of this correspondence and two, that the decision to remove our client from office will be held in abeyance pending the outcome of our client's review application. So essentially, except for asking for an indulgence in the form of correspondence, there is no legal process before this particular committee to prevent it from taking a decision and proceeding with the matter. So accordingly, as I understand it, on the face of the evidence before the committee, there is absolutely no bar to prevent it from conducting its order of business and finalizing the matter at hand. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Advocate uh, Musa. Um, once again, I think um, my apologies, members. The letter is will be circulated today to members. Uh, yesterday, you received the legal opinion from Advocate Adikare. Uh, we will finalize the matter, uh, which means the adoption of the report, because I think uh, we are in agreement that we need to proceed uh, on the 9th of September. Uh, after that, it will go to the House for adoption. Is that in order, members? Yes, Agreed. Chair. Agreed. Agreed. Yes, Chair, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I think the matter has been dispensed with. Um, so we will meet again on the 8th or the 9th of September to finalize the matter before it goes to the House for the final adoption. Thank you very much, uh, Advocate Musa, Mr. Mayor, and to your team for the information and for the guidance given. Uh, thank you very much, members. Uh, we will meet next week. Thank you. We will meet somewhere. Thank you, Chair. Chair, tell the new whip we must attend more regular now. <laughs> I said, please, Werner. I said, please, Werner. Mm, from our side, we will monitor your attendance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very sure, much. Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.